Ďalším programu sú rozpravy o prípadoch porušovania ľudských práv, demokracie a zásad právneho štátu podľa článku 144. A ako prvý, alebo ako prvá téma v tejto rozprave je Irán, najmä otrava stoviek školáčok. A ako prvý vystúpi jeden z autor, z autorov návrhu, pán David Lega. Prosím, máte slovo. Thank you, Mr. President, dear colleagues. Thousands, thousands of schoolgirls in Iran have been poisoned, many of whom have been hospitalized. And we don't know for sure who is behind the attacks or what the purpose of them is. But what we do know for sure is that girls have been hurt, that girls have been prevented from attending their education, and that this has hindered both young girls and their parents from participating in the protests against the regime. And if the regime is not behind the poisoning attacks, it has nevertheless failed to act on numerous credible reports of systematic toxic attacks in schools across Iran. Either way, these are attacks are a sign of weakness of the regime. Strong leaders would never attack nor accept attacks on children, on their own children. The resolution that the parliament is to adopt tomorrow recalls that the Islamic Republic bears full responsibility for Iranian women and girls' fundamental right to education and to safety. Needless to say, depriving girls of education has a devastating impact on their future as they become more vulnerable to poverty, forced marriages, domestic violence and sex trafficking. And why? Why have these girls been poisoned and kept from school? It looks like the poisoning attacks on schoolgirls are revenge for the role young women played in recent protests against the regime and against the mandatory veiling. When girls speak up and demand the basic human rights that every single person is entitled to, they are punished with violence even in their own classroom. The poisoning of schoolgirls in Iran is pure evil, and the regime of the Islamic Republic of Iran is pure evil. So the most important task for us, dear colleagues, is to reiterate our steadfast support for the aspirations of the Iranian people who want to live in a free, democratic country. The European Parliament stands with the women and girls in Iran. And I stand with you, the change, change makers of Iran. Thank you. Thank you very much. Colleagues, just a quick announcement. Uh, because we're over half an hour uh, delayed, that there will be no um, catch the eye or blue cards for the, for the rest of the evening so that all of us, and especially the, the interpreters, can make it on time. Thank you very much. Dalšia bude mať slovo pani Evin Insir. Into this debate, I'm taking the words of the Nobel Peace Prize receiver sharing about, uh, about this who was with us today. Speak to your respective foreign affairs minister on how to listen to the people in Iran. I would have loved to do that, but unfortunately the Swedish presidency, so to say, the Swedish government just left. I therefore want, however, to turn to the Swedish government through, I guess, they are listening to me wherever they are, but I'm going to do it in Swedish. Både kvinnorna och skolflickorna i Iran är modiga. Med risk för sitt liv har de tagit sig ut på gator och torg men även skolor. De fortsätter att skalla kvinna, liv, frihet. Zan Zendegi Azadi, Jen Jian Azadi. Som följd av detta fiftades hundratals skolflickor. Strafffrihet som förövarna bakom dessa brutala attacker åtnjuter är oacceptabelt. Vi måste säkerställa en FN-ledd utredning om dessa brott och stödja skolflickorna i landet. Till Sveriges regering, till Sveriges utrikesminister Tobias Billström och deras stödparti Sverigedemokraterna vill jag avslutningsvis återigen säga. Sluta hitta ursäkter för regimen i Iran och stämpla istället revolutionsgardet IRGC som en terroristorganisation. Organisation nu. Ni sitter på EU-ordförandeskapet. Ďakujem veľmi pekne a ďalšia vystúpi spoluautorka pani Samira Rafaela. Prosím, máte slovo. Thank you very much. So, obviously the government of Iran 
has completely lost their legitimacy when they decided to systematically discriminate against women and minorities. And what is so much important right now is that there will be a legitimate investigation to make sure that the UN can do a fact-finding mission to Iran, to also make sure that we have an investigation that is legitimate and that is fair. Because we need girls in the world to have education. That is their right. And it's absolutely absurd what is happening right now. Iran is violently repressing their own people. And therefore, the member states should make sure that we make available humanitarian visas for women and girls that are so much in need right now. That's the best we can do at least. And let's also make sure that the IRGC will become, on the, will become a terrorist organization, will be put on the terrorist list. Because it is very important now that as the EU, we make use of our instruments, we make use of our voice, and we make a strong statement towards such regime who does not respect women's rights and girls' rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is Mr. Ernest Urtasun. Please, give us your Thank you, Chair. Day by day, the situation worsens in Iran and the feeling of outrage grows among Iranians. The deliberate poisoning of hundreds of schoolgirls is the latest cruel attempt at intimidating girls and women for their bravery and courage in a country that represses them. Teenage girls and university students have been at the forefront of the countrywide protests that have been held since the death of Gina Mashamini in September last year. After the beating of protesters, poisoning seems now to be a new attempt to silence and punish them for their brave acts as part of a wider systemic discrimination against women and girls in the country. We cannot and we will not remain silent in the face of such atrocity. And we call on Iran to launch a credible and transparent investigation, but also together with independent international organizations and to hold those responsible to account. But we do also call, and we will call with a resolution tomorrow, on the Commission and the Member States to increase technical and capacity support to Iranian civil society and to facilitate the issuance of visas and asylum, as well as emergency grants for those that need to leave the country, particularly women and girls. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the next question is Marisa Matias. Please, Matias, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Since November, millions of women have suffered attacks of chemicals in schools in all the Islamic Republic of Iran. They have been reported as problems of respiratory problems, pain in the head, nausea, torture and paralysis of the temporary members. Centenas de estudantes e funcionários foram hospitalizados e morreu tragicamente Fatemé Razai de apenas 11 anos. Acredita-se que estes ataques provêm de grupos religiosos que se opõem à educação para raparigas. E é impossível dissociá-los dos protestos liderados por mulheres e raparigas desde a morte de Masha Amini. A consequência é ter pais e mães a manter as filhas em casa para as proteger. Condenamos estes ataques contra as alunas e instamos as autoridades iranianas a conduzirem uma investigação rápida, transparente e imparcial sobre os envenenamentos. Precisamos de uma missão de inquérito independente das Nações Unidas. Precisamos também de vistos de urgência para quem está a lutar pela liberdade e pela vida. Não podemos abandonar as bravas meninas e raparigas do Irão. Nada poderá impedir as mulheres do Irão de serem livres. Muito obrigada. Ďakujem veľmi pekne a ďalší vystúpi pán Charlie Weimers. Prosím, máte slovo. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. The Islamic Republic is an evil republic. The mullahs and or their henchmen have poisoned thousands of schoolgirls in 11 provinces as part of an unconscionable and despicable tactic to suppress pro-democracy protests. These girls are not mere numbers, another statistic, but individuals, as valuable to their families as my own four daughters are to me. They have, or rather should have, the sa same unalienable rights to life and liberty as our own daughters. These crimes against humanity are an affront to the people of Iran and to the international community. Our answer cannot be meek diplomatic condemnations and feeble demands for justice 
for their families. No, our answer must have real consequences for those that took the decision to perpetrate these evil acts against young girls and strike at the political and economic foundations of the Islamist theocracy. The corrupt mullah's time is running out. The youth of Iran dare to dream again. And the party that will follow the fall of this evil regime will be one to behold. I call upon the Commission, the European Council, and the Swedish presidency, including Foreign Minister Tobias Bilström, to invite representatives of the Alliance for Democracy and Freedom in Iran to Brussels for discussions on the future of a free, secular, and democratic Iran to end negotiations on the JCPOA, to classify the IRGC and use their assets to create a strike fund. And member states should, of course, recall their ambassadors from Tehran and expel both the Mullah's diplomats and their families. Tohtarane Masmum Zendegi Azadi. Merci. Ďakujem veľmi pekne. A teraz vystúpi za skupinu EPP, pán Sean Kelly. Prosím, máte slovo. Once again, we are witnessing the Iranian regime's vicious repression of its women. In September, Iranian security forces repeatedly used violence and intimidation to silence women and girls peacefully protesting the regime's anti-women policies. We are now contending with what could be potentially one of the most heinous and inhumane acts of systemic abuse against Iranian women. The distressing reports of the serial poisonings of schoolgirls across Iran call for prompt action and independent investigation. The regime's weak response to the situation sends a clear message that Iran does not listen to its women. I also call on the EU to increase, increase technical and capacity support to Iranian civil society. Women are equal to men and education is a fundamental right. There should be zero tolerance for any attempt to infringe on this right. Ďakujem veľmi pekne a za skupinu SND vystúpi pani Alessandra Moretti. Prosím, máte slovo. Un ciuffo di capelli sfugge al velo e una donna in Iran viene uccisa. Un balletto e cinque ragazze vengono arrestate. Una giornata dietro il banco di scuola e le studentesse vengono avvelenate. Non possiamo più tollerare violenze che mirano a privare le ragazze del diritto al loro futuro. Sono state migliaia le studentesse vittime di armi chimiche in questi mesi, un crimine terribile e vigliacco. Armi chimiche usate nelle scuole, che rappresentano il luogo per eccellenza dell'emancipazione. La premio Nobel Shirin Ebadi, rivolgendosi a quest'aula oggi, è stata chiara. Non giratevi dall'altra parte. Voglio dire alla signora Ebadi, alla famiglia di Masciamini, alle cinque ragazze arrestate, alle studentesse che hanno paura di tornare a scuola e a tutti coloro che protestano per le loro libertà, che noi continueremo a lavorare perché la Guardia Rivoluzionaria sia considerata gruppo terrorista, perché siano implementate le sanzioni, perché nessun accordo commerciale o finanziario venga portato avanti con il governo iraniano. Lavoreremo per i canali umanitari sicuri per le attiviste e continueremo a patrocinare il chi ingiustamente è stato incarcerato e rischia la vita. Sosteniamo le donne e un Iran libero. Women, life, freedom. Ďakujem veľmi pekne za skupinu Renew. Vystúpi pani Abir Al-Slani. Prosím, máte slovo. Jin, Jian, Azadi, Woman, Life, Freedom, three worlds that have shaken the world. If you have not heard them, then you have been sleeping, it's time to wake up. If you have not seen the bullets of the IRGC on the freedom-seeking women's body, if you have not smelled the poisoning gas that has been attacked to the schoolgirls in Iran, then it is time for you to come out of the cave that you have been into. But you know what it's time for? For the foreign affairs ministers of the EU to actually finally act, to choose a side, to show the same courage as the women of Iran that are shouting on the top of their lungs for freedom. It's time to put the IRGC on the EU terrorist list. We have chosen to stand with the women and girls 
in Iran until the people of Iran are free. Our fury will be bigger than the oppressor. Jean Jian Azadi, women, life, freedom, put IRGC on the EU terrorist list now. Ďakujem veľmi pekne a za skupinu Greens vystúpi pani Hanna Neumann. Prosím, máte slovo. Dear colleagues, women and girls are at the heart of the protests in Iran. They are out in the streets waving their hijab. They are singing Baroy Azadi. In the classrooms, they chase away militias and they even record videos dancing in the streets. But while those dancing in the streets on Women's Day have been put in prison for two days, forced into confessions and forced into wearing hijab, those poisoning schoolgirls with gas are still running free. And while the regime puts all its resources behind harassing and jailing girls, they only issue lukewarm calls for investigations after a month of poisoning. But believe me, no one is falling for this regime propaganda anymore, which is why we call for an international investigation into the poisoning and for more sanctions against all those terrorizing the people for Iran. And dear colleagues, no one will be able to silence the women of Iran. And I want us to stand with the girls, the women, the people of Iran, until they are all free. Baroye Azadi. Ďakujem veľmi pekne a ďalšie vystúpi pán Richard Čarnecký za skupinu ICR. Pane Przewodniczący, pani komisarz, szanowne koleżanki, szanowni koledzy, myślę, że ta debata jest bardzo potrzebna o ile Nasze słowa, ważne słowa ponad podziałami politycznymi przerodzą się w czyny. Tu pada szereg pomysłów. Słyszę, że może warto odwołać ambasadorów państw zachodnich z Iranu. Inni mówią o konieczności wysłania misji międzynarodowej, która by sprawdziła to, co dzieje się w Iranie. Pewnie na to władze w Tehranie nie wyrażą zgody. Ale jedno jest pewne, trzeba nie tylko o tym głośno mówić, ale trzeba przełożyć to, o czym dzisiaj słyszeliśmy tutaj w trakcie obchodów Międzynarodowego Dnia Kobiet, słyszeliśmy od przedstawicielki Iranu, przełożyć to na pewne konkretne działania Zachodu. Myślę, że tylko język sankcji może być przez Iran zrozumiały. I na koniec życzę, aby w językiej przyszłości to kobieta, to kobieta, stanęła na czele rządu Iranu, władz Iranu, czy to będzie pani Mariam Radżawi, czy ktoś inny, byłby to najlepszy policzek dla tych, którzy dzisiaj przyszedł kobiety w Iranie. Dziękuję bardzo pięknie, a dalsza wystąpi za skupinu ID, pani Sylwia Sardone. Le atrocità del regime islamico iraniano fanno sempre più rabbrividire. Centinaia di ragazze sono rimaste intossicate in numerose scuole dell'Iran. Un avvelenamento di massa. Qualcuno vuole negare alle donne iraniane il proprio diritto all'istruzione. È una forma di vendetta contro le numerose studentesse che hanno partecipato alle proteste e hanno fatto video postati sui social dove si tolgono il velo e gridano slogan antigovernativi. Abbiamo visto anche cinque ragazze fare un ballo senza velo islamico in mezzo alla strada. Ecco, quelle cinque ragazze sono state arrestate e costrette a scusarsi con il capo coperto. I divieti imposti dalla dittatura islamica rappresentano in pieno la loro concezione della donna, con il velo islamico, sottomessa, senza istruzione, un essere inferiore. Dobbiamo sostenere le ragazze che lottano e condannare gli atti di terrore portati avanti dal regime contro la libertà delle donne. Basta stare in silenzio, basta chiudere gli occhi. Women, life, freedom. Ďakujem veľmi pekne a ďalšia vystúpi pani Pernille Weiss. Prosím, máte slovo. 
Iran kan stå ved et point of no return nu. Vi er lige præcis der i historien, hvor situationen i Iran med alt det, den gør ved menneskers værdighed, kvinders position og unge pigers fremtid kan forandres. Især i kraft af den oprejsning, befolkningen selv mobiliserer, og den forbindelse til omverdenen og den iranske diaspora, som vores digitale samtid giver mulighed for. Derfor bliver det hørt i Iran, og stort set hele Europaparlamentet i en resolution i januar kræver, at for Irans revolutionsgarde IRGC på EU's terrorliste. Det samme har flere europæiske udenrigsminister også udtalt, at de gerne ser sker. Sådan noget giver håb. For lige nu næres den iranske befolkning af de håb, vi giver dem. At give mennesker i desperation håb må ikke være en gratis omgang eller varm luft. Det kan vi simpelthen ikke være bekendt. Ligesom vi heller ikke kan være bekendt at hælde faglige juridiske argumenter ned ad brættet, som EU's udenrigspolitiske repræsentant Borrell påstår ved at sige, at vi ikke kan få IRGC på EU's terrorliste, uden at der forelægger en konkret domstolsafgørelse. Lad os nu få fakta på bordet. Lad os give Iran handling og ikke kun håb. Děkujeme velmi pěkně. Další vystupí pan Thais Röten. Prosím, máte slovo. President, Commission, dear colleagues, they can't breathe, President. Imagine the horror. 7,000 Iranian girls thinking school is safe and then suddenly gasping for air. We may not yet know who is behind these atrocious attacks, not for certain. But we do know one thing. The Islamic Republic always comes after women first. Khamenei and his IRGC have never hesitated to kill Iranians, especially those leading the resistance. And the UN must investigate. This cannot be left to Tehran. And Commissioner and Council, Council, um, when when will you finally designate the IRGC as what they are? There really is no need to dance around the word. They are terrorists, plain and simple. President, today let's celebrate the schoolgirls' fierce resistance, the leadership of Iran's women, their unbroken defiance, dancing in the streets, their hair flowing freely in the wind. That's the freedom Iran deserves. Ďakujem veľmi pekne. Ďalšia vystúpi pani Maria Soraya Rodríguez Ramos. Prosím, máte slovo. Gracias, presidente. Como imaginar un mayor horror en un país eh, que es el país del mundo con mayor ejecuciones a mujeres, torturas, asesinatos? Pues sí, una acción sin precedentes por su magnitud y su naturaleza. El ataque más criminal contra niñas y estudiantes que hemos conocido un envenenamiento masivo. Y el ministro de Salud de Irán indicó el pasado 26 de febrero que se trata de un veneno suave. No podemos confiar en ninguna investigación interna de este país. Necesitamos una investigación internacional. Las mujeres afganas crearon un símbolo que ha traspasado fronteras. Mujer, vida y libertad. Pero de nosotros esperan más que palabras. Esperan realmente acciones contundentes visados de emergencia, más oportunidades para la integración europea, apoyo para poner en contacto a las mujeres en la diáspora iraníes, más de cuatro millones con las mujeres que resisten dentro. Porque no es verdad lo que dice el régimen autocrático, que ellos o el caos. No, Irán tiene derecho a una real transición democrática. Prosím, máte slovo. Danke, Herr Präsident, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Was die freie Welt nicht geschafft hat mit vielen Versuchen, mit dem Atomdeal, ohne Atomdeal, mit Sanktionen bisher zumindest, vielleicht auch manchmal durch Halbherzigkeit oder ein bisschen Naivität, und das nötigt mir Respekt ab, das schafft jetzt eine Bürgerbewegung und eigentlich eine Bürgerinnenbewegung im Iran, nämlich dieses diabolische Regime an den Rand seiner Existenz zu bringen. Das ist sehr, sehr viel wert für die Bürgerinnen und Bürger des Iran, für die Zukunft des Iran, aber für den gesamten Nahen Osten, für die gesamte Welt, weil der Iran eine Bedrohung ist, 
für die eigenen Bürgerinnen und Bürger. Das iranische Regime ist diese Bedrohung und das iranische Regime ist es aber auch für seine Nachbarstaaten, besonders für unseren Partnerstaat Israel und auch für uns, auch im Wege des islamistischen Terrors, der unterstützt wird aus dem Iran, der nicht einmal davor zurückschreckt, seitens dieses Regimes Schülerinnen zu vergiften, damit sie nicht in die Schule gehen können. Dieses Regime gehört an den Rand seiner Existenz gebracht und überwunden. Ďakujem veľmi pekne. Ďalší vystúpi pán Jiří Pospíšil. Prosím, máte slovo. Ďakujem pekne, pane predsedající. Dámy a pánové, ja sa chci připojit ke svým předřečníkům a jednoznačne odsoudit ohavné zločiny, ktoré sú v Iránu páchány vúči detem, vúči ženám. Ať už je režim páchá přímo, anebo pouze toleruje, je vyníkem toho, co se v Iránu děje. Atmosféra strachu, nenávisti, útoků vůči ženám, útoků proti všem odpůrcům režimu je to, co je příčinou toho, že tisíce mladých žen a dětí jsou takto napadány a takto poškozovány. My to musíme jasně odsoudit. Já jsem mnohokrát zde vystupoval a kritizoval jsem iránský režim. I v době během minulého volebního období kdy někteří zde byli optimisté, že je možné s iránským režimem se domluvit. Bohužel se ukazuje, že to tak není možné. A proto se připojuji, byť jsem to říkali v minulosti, k hlasům všech, kteří tvrdí, že je třeba zpřístit sankce vůči režimu a chtít mezinárodní vyšetření těchto zločinů. Děkuji. Děkuji velmi pěkně. Další vystupí pan Stanislav Polčák. Prosím, máte slovo. Děkuji, pan předseda. Dear colleagues. Iranian girls and women have been the target of this organized gas attack launched by Khamenei agents against them in 100 schools because they, they want to target the women and girls who are the hope for change in Iran. There is a mounting evidence of government involvement in these horrific attacks. And today we heard the directory from, from Iranian women representatives how shamefully The Iranian regime treats women, girls and young people for many decades and we heard also the request to blacklist the IRGC. I am really glad that our parliament has long-term cooperation with Iranian opposition groups. One important movement, National Council of Resistance, is also headed by a woman, Madame Rajavi, and I remember her warning that any contracts with the Iranian regime are pointless. We lifted the sanctions and the Iranian regime used the new money not for Iranian people, but to invest in weapons, in drones, which are now attacking Ukraine, and to get a nuclear weapon. So please, no more mistakes. Let's work with Iranian women and let's blacklist the IRGC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is Mr. Javier Zazarejos. Please, please, please. Gracias, presidente. Después de lo que hemos escuchado aquí hace unas pocas horas, eh, no se me ocurre nada que pueda mejorar las palabras de la Premio Nobel de la Paz, la señora Evadi, porque es difícil pensar en un testimonio más auténtico, más apasionado y más apremiante. Sí que quiero recordar una petición que la señora Evadi nos hizo hoy, y es pedir que conste en los libros de historia lo que este régimen hace con las niñas iraníes. Y nosotros en el Parlamento podemos eh, a colaborar a que efectivamente en los libros de historia conste la represión del régimen. Pero tenemos que hacer más. Se ha hablado reiteradamente y es necesario repetir la necesidad de que se incorpore a la Guardia Revolucionaria a la lista de organizaciones terroristas. No nos engañemos. El régimen podrá iniciar sus operaciones de lavado pero el régimen no se puede reformar. Ahora bien, el régimen no se puede reformar, pero el régimen no es imbatible. Y debemos tenerlo presente cuando afrontemos la estrategia que la amenaza iraní requiere. Muchas gracias. Gracias muy pequeño. Y para el final, la Comisión Europea, Helena Daly. Gracias, Matías Lobo. Gracias, presidente. 
I, I want to thank this house for its continued close attention to the worrying internal situation in Iran. The nationwide unrest following the death of Mahsa Amini have decreased substantially. But the root causes of social unrest are still there and are not being seriously addressed by the Iranian authorities. There is serious concern about the fast track trials and the harsh sentences, including death sentences, handed down against protesters. The death penalty is an unacceptable denial of human dignity and integrity, and the EU aims at its universal abolition. The EU and its member states have been quick to condemn and react to the Iranian authorities' handling of the protests and continue to respond to any issue of concern from Iran. Human rights and fundamental freedoms must be respected in all circumstances. The EU is closely monitoring the ongoing pardoning of Iranian convicts and detainees, including those unjustly arrest arrested in the context of the protests. We expect Iran to make good use of this opportunity. Iran has been on the agenda of the Foreign Affairs Council for the past six months. Five packages of targeted, restricted, restrictive measures have been adopted so far, and this approach will continue as long as necessary in line with the Council conclusions adopted in December, which define the EU's policy approach towards Iran. The countrywide poisoning of Iranian students, mostly female students, including school children, is a further cause for concern. We express our solidarity with the student victims of the poisonings and their families. Many aspects still need to be clarified, including who is behind this new series of attacks and what the motive is. We are following reports of arrests made in recent days and expect Iran to conduct a proper and transparent investigation and hold the perpetrators accountable in full respect of the due process rights of the accused individuals. In line with the Council conclusions supported by all member states, Keeping channels of communication open with Iran continues to be crucial in order to address as appropriate the multiple challenges posed by Iran, ranging from human rights to the nuclear dimension and the JCPOA to the unacceptable military cooperation with Russia. The HRVP and the EU foreign ministers will continue to take stock at the next Foreign Affairs Council, and I can assure you that they will continue to show zero tolerance towards abuses and human rights violations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Commissioner. The conversation has ended here. There were six proposed amendments to the conclusion of this discussion, and the vote on them will be held tomorrow.